p.m. in Nagadeep, 1.30 p.m. in Vila Govinda, Italy, 2.30 p.m. in Govinda land, Ukraine, and around the world in different places, different times of the day. And their infinity media showing us Srila Gurudev's push, uh, push sorry, Srila Gurudev's Samadhi on the left side, Srila Guru Maharaj's Samadhi in the center, and then just a hint of the main temple on the right side, the Nat Mandir is there. The temple of love and affection, Gurudev Samadhi, the temple of union in separation, Srila Guru Maharaj's Samadhi. So Jai Srila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Srila Bhakti Rokho Kridha Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, and Jai Shri Chaitanya Sarasat Mat Ki Jai and Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandhava Govinda Sundarju Ki Jai. Remembering them all, may our day be auspicious. Our day or our evening, wherever we may be, may that be all auspicious. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhara Shri Vasari Shri Gaura Bhakti Vrinda Jai Shila Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Shila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj Ki Jai Jai So where are we going today Maharaj? <laughs> We're going in a circle, Maharaj, <laughs> clockwise. <laughs> We're starting from Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, which is in Kolodeep, as probably all of our devotees here are aware. And if we know of this, at least the description of this eight petaled lotus of Nabadeep Dam, then after Kolodeep comes uh, Ritu Deep, then after Ritu Deep, Janu Deep then Modadruma Deep, then Rudra Deep, and then we'll come back to Kola Deep. So we've got actually quite a few islands to go around today, and some pastimes in each place is as given, as revealed to us by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. But we're starting in Kola Deep, Maharaj, and ending in Kola Deep. And if you like, we have Bhakti Lalita Devi Dasi there to start us off because she's been living in the temple and she's already happily said, Oh, about Kaladi, I'm happy to say a few words if the opportunity comes. Jai Kaladi Dham Ki Jai Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai Aparad Bhanjanar Part Ki jai. jai, Jai, Om Vishnu Pad Chila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Marsh Ki Jai, Om Vishnu Pad Chila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Marsh Ki Jai, Bhagavan Chila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupad Ki Jai, Shri Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai, Lakshmi Varaha Dev Ki Jai, Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharva Govinda Sundar Ju Ki Jai, Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Shri Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Marsh Ki Jai, Jai Shri Navadip Dham Parikrama Ki Jai, Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavani Pyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha. Dandavats to all the devotees. And yes, Koladweep is our ashraya our divine shelter where the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat is, uh, has been established by our grand Guru Maharaj and where we took our shelter and initiation and received so much wealth of, of our Guru Varga and Mahaprabhu's line. And uh, some specific connection is there with Lakshmi Varaha. And we have our own history. I'll mention that after. But um, in Navadip Dhammahatnya, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is uh, narrating Nityananda's uh, 
storytelling and he mentions how this place, Nityananda Prabhu mentions how auspicious is this place. Five rivers are joining here together, some hidden like the Saraswati and the Manasa Ganga, Alakananda, Mandakini, Ganga, uh, Jamuna, all in this place. And if anyone leaves their body in this place, they will attain Goloka Vrindavan in how it's a place of, of history of sacrifice with Lord Brahma and uh, all the holy abodes are existing there and will never be demolished during the time of destruction. All the Vedas and the Munis and Rishis and uh, Upanishads, everyone takes shelter in one portion of the lotus flower of Navadip and stays there and remains there. So uh, Nityananda Prabhu tells a story from Satya Yuga, the history of some history of that place and how there was a Brahmin boy very auspicious Brahmin boy who loved Varaha and had a deity of Varaha living there and worshiping him with so much eagerness and always begging, Varaha, please give me your darshan. I want to see you and I want uh, eternal service and such eagerness and hankerness hankering he had within him invoked Varaha Dev to appear before him. And Nityananda Prabhu explains how uh, Varaha was so big like a mountain and that Koladweep is a, a raised, at raised elevation. It's a, a hill, mountain hill area and that it's more specifically Govardhan Hill in uh, Navadeep. So um, Varaha appears like a mountain and extraordinary, beautiful, and his tusks are shining and his all auspicious features are there and the Brahmin boy is so ecstatic and pays his dandavats and rolls in the ground and Brahadev spoke to him saying that uh, you are so fortunate to worship me here in this place. It's a holy place where during one sacrifice of Lord Brahma, I came here and I killed Hiranyaksha. And uh, I will again appear here in the beginning of Kali Yuga as Goranga. And you will also join me. You will also come. And this boy was so ecstatic and Varaha told him, keep this concealed. It's a hidden revealed truth. And it's hidden, mentioned in the scriptures, but a very hidden gem. So it will be revealed and I will come and you will join me. So uh, Raman boy was so ecstatic and so happy and worshiped his deity and then ap appeared again in the beginning of Kali Yuga during that time of Mahaprabhu's appearance. And we saw how the history of our Lakshmi Varahadev, Shalagram Shila, he was in so many different temples. I believe he started out in a king's house somewhere in India and was passed to other Gaudiya Mat, uh, Acharjas, and in each place he went, everything just turned chaotic. Things were like out of control, getting demolished, everything going wrong, quarreling, and just chaos wherever this Shalagram Shila would go to and no one could handle him. 
and they kept passing him on. And finally, someone very wise, who was it, Judge of Armarash, or gave it to Srila Sridhar Marsh and asked, please uh, identify this Shalagram Srila and, and tell us what he wants. And Srila Sridhar Marsh examined this Srila and said, this is uh, Varaha, and he wants to be in Kola Dweep, which is his eternal abode. And he also uh, wants sweet rice. So from that day on, he was put in the uh, Shingasan in our Navadip Mat, in a little every day throne. Offer the and every day from that day on, offered sweet rice to Lakshmi Varaha Dev. The puja must be done by a saffron clad brahmachari, for the yes. record. And Brahmin birth. No. That was what we heard. Srila Sridhar Marsh said this deity must be worshipped by a saffron clad brahmachari born in a Brahmin's family. So that tradition Gurudev always tried to keep. So that Srila, after such an adventure and causing so much chaos, landed where he wanted to be in Koladweep, his own abode. He's the presiding deity of Koladweep and still being worshipped today. Yeah. So this is our place of the mm -hmm. Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. We have our, uh, our gurus and grandfather gurus and all uh, our shelter is at their holy lotus feet. And this Navadip Dham Parikrama includes our Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. And all together, going to the next place. Where is that? Well, a little more to be said about this place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that, as you said, uh, that Varaha was like mountainous in size and that became known as like Koladvip Parbat, and Parbat means mountain. And Srila Guru Maharaj said, interestingly, because when we think of Govardhan, we always associate it with mountains, Giri Govardhan, as indicated there. And Guru Maharaj said, previously, this place where the Chaitanya Saraswat Mahat is located, he said, it was very high up. He said, in time, the movement of the Ganga and other things that appears to be in a lower position. He's saying, but it was once like that. So, and in the um, Mat Pranam, Sri Chaitanya Charitamritam, which I described it, the conceptual architecture of Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. Like to understand, because this name can be used in many ways. What is the concept that should be associated with the name Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat? Right? Like Guru Maharaj himself will say, you, uh, an, uh, an institution is formed to promote an ideal. Absent the ideal, then what is that? His thematic consistency, form and substance. So form, is what is the substance of that? So he's the founder of Charja of Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. Right? Saying he took Chaitanya from Chaitanya Mat, that's where we're like Yogpit and that Chaitanya Mat. So he said, I took Chaitanya from that. But then Saraswat to indicate so from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the conception of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not another conception. What is the conception of Mahaprabhu? That comes down through his followers, right? Through Brahmananda, but Rup, Sanatan, Jiva, etc. that way. Gaudiya Darshan. How is Mahaprabhu seeing? What is Mahaprabhu? Uh, um, 
internally. We hear Radha Bhava Duti Subolita. So it, in another way, it's the angle of vision of Srimati Radharani. See, Braja Gopi, they're not interested in forms of Narayan or things that are dharmic or that's not their interest. The interest of the Braja Gopis is exclusively Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. Right? Who, who is Swayam Bhagavan Krishna? Who's at the right hand of Radharani. In some other position, not Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. Right? Just as we're told. And Nilachala Jagannath Puri, uh, Dwaraka Krishna. And you see in the meeting in Kurukshetra, Braja Gopis cannot conceal their disappointment before Dwaraka Krishna. <laughs> Just like sometimes like someone who you knew a particular way, now they have different clothes, different associates, and <laughs> they cannot conceal their disappointment. No flute, dressed like a king, and we'll just be addressed later at Vidyanagar by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. But so the means, Mahaprabhu, his conception, his, he's seeing through the eyes of his beloved. This can't like go on the whole time. So it put the leash and, and uh, <clears throat> Vaishnava Thakur Tomara Kukur. Uh, so, Gaudiya Darshan, the way Mahaprabhu sees, and how does he see? Through the eyes of Srimati Radharani. That is his interest. How she sees Krishna. And she is only interested in Krishna in a particular way not in expansions of Krishna or other avatars of him. No, just exclusively uh, the Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. So, he's a, you know, Srimach Chaitanya Saraswata Mata Bara Udgita Kirtir Jaya Srim. The flag that Guru Maharaj put above the Sri Chaitanya Saraswata Mata. It was very simple at the time, a hut, bamboo hut, but with one huge bamboo pole and a big red flag at the top. And some people are make, teasing, like, what is Sri Dharmar doing? He's in a hut and then writes this big mantra, Sri Chaitanya Saraswata Mata Bara Udgit. This Chaitanya Saraswata Mat is so exalted and extensive and it's loudly proclaiming the glories of Srimati Radharani to the world. Udgita Kirti Jayasrim. Jayasri means Srimati Radharani. Gurudev had a press that printed the Gaudi Darshan and all these, it was called Jayasri Press. That was the name of his press. Jayasri Press. Udgita Kirti Jayasrim. Mahaprabhu descended to tell the world how great is Radharani and her girlfriends who own Krishna. Copyright, trademark, they own Krishna. Only they can distribute Krishna, give a connection with Krishna. Substantially. No, not others. So he has come to celebrate her glories. Jadi Gorna Hoita Tabiki Hoita Kemari Dari Tam Dehe. Radhar Mahima Prima Rasasima Jagata Janata. Okay. The Radhar Mahima, the glories of Radharani, and Prema Rasasima means Mahabhav, her type of Krishna Prem. This is what Krishna is interested, why he descended as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to taste it himself and to bring others in connection with that divine substance. Chaitanya, so as it comes down from Mahaprabhu to uh, Rupa Goswami, the Rupa Nuga line, and to uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the Srila Saraswati Thakur, and his followers. Therefore, Chaitanya Saraswata. Right. So, Srimad Chaitanya Saraswata Matabara Udgita Kirti Jaisa Bibrat Sambhati Gangatata Nikata. And where, where, where is its location? 
And it doesn't mean any um, like a, uh, an objective GPS sense saying, what is it spiritual location? It's on the banks of the Ganga in Navadvip Dham. Right? That, that, it doesn't mean like Google Maps conception in Navadvip Dham. Right? That's where its location is. Right? When I was go going to return to America for preaching ones, and it was time to, uh, you know, the, um, take leave of the lotus feet of his divine grace. And one thing I should say, every single time, he'd call me in his room, Srila Gurudev would there, he would tell, Gurudev would go get the garland from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, they have, and, take that, and then he would, put that on me on behalf of growers and growers would hug me and say some words. Uh, and he said, uh, now, you know, our Goswami Maharaj is going to some remote corner of the world. <laughs> and I was thinking like, I'm going to San Francisco. <laughs> And Guru Maharaj seeing the, the look on my face, he said, and very sweetly, as you see, and so he had a way of turning his head and spreading his arms out like a loving embrace. And he said, in an irresistibly loving, affectionate way, he said, Navadweep is your home. This is your home here. And for some time in service to Navadweep, you're going to some remote corner of the world. Like that. And that, that is what the members of Chaitanya Saraswat Mat aspire to. Right. Uh, so, the service of the lotus feet of Srila Guru Maharaj under the direction of Srila Guru Dev and his faithful, sincere followers. Srila Govinda Maharaj, he is his mission is to promote the glories of his Guru Maharaj and his Guru Maharaj's Mat, the Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. That is his mission. And anyone who will even remotely assist him in doing that, he said, I become your slave. You want to serve my Guru Maharaj? I'll be your slave. That's the contract. It's based on service to the lotus feet, promoting the concepts of his Guru Maharaj, his Guru Maharaj, everything is his Guru Maharaj. Do you know who, in Srila Govinda Maharaj's conception of Guru Maharaj, who he sees Guru Maharaj as? In his own words, Srimati Radharani. That's his vision of Guru Maharaj. That Guru Maharaj is Srimati Radharani. Just for the sake of this talk, that doesn't mean literally, as Saraswati Thakur in the conclusion of uh, his uh, Charya Tamaritam saying, when I look deeply, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Gorkashur, I'm seeing, you know, uh, Srup Damodar and Gadadhar Pandit, and by extension, Lalita Saki, Srimati Radharani. Gurudev sees Radharani, Gurumars is Radharani to him. So he wants to serve. Radharani in this way, her surrogate, her, you know, Navadipa, Koladri Raje, there it is, Kola Adri, Adri Raj means Giri, uh, Giri Raj Govardhan, Adri Raj, like Adri Dharan also means Giri, and he said, where is it? Kola, Koladri Raje. Gupta Govardhan in Kaladweep. So you say, Guru Maharaj is saying these things. Is there any basis for that? <laughs> you know? Oh, I believe there's this book written by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur called the Navadip Dham Mahatmyam. And there you will see all of these things described by Srila Guru Maharaj. The uh, you, should, you can say the Shastric basis, the ontological basis of that. <clears throat> then he says, yet to say, Gora Saraswata Nirata, Gora Gata Grananti, 
Guru Maharaj said, what, what is the service of the members of Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mahat? What do they do? He's saying this. Goragata Grananti. Gorkata. They're, they're always talking, singing the glories of Mahaprabhu, which means by extension, Srimati Radharani, as he stated in the beginning. This is what the members of Chaitanya Saraswat Mat are always promoting the glories of Goranga Mahaprabhu. When we came in connection with Srila Guru Maharaj, although having been in connection with Krishna consciousness movement for some years, you could say approximately 10, coming in connection with him, a major shift took place in our conceptualization in his own way of expressing it. You know, Sakshari Tenasamasa Shastra, quoting Vishwanath, Ruttasta Tabab Jateva Sadhi. You see uh, Guru as Krishna, but then it says kin to, but just like Saraswati Thakur, looking deeper, 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 that upon closer scrutiny, kin to Prabhoya Priya Evatasya. The shift takes place where Guru from Krishna to Prabhu Priya, the one who is most dear to Krishna. Like in all the prayers, Namaum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutala, you know, to my Guru who is most dear to this. But of those, of all of those who are most dear to Krishna, who is the most dear? That means you know, Prabhu Priya, Achuta Priya. The Bhagavatam, when Vyasa says, when he's saying, although I've given Maha, Bharata, the Vedas, the Puranas, all these things, I'm, fear, I'm despondent, he tells Narada. And Narada, they have a discussion that becomes the 10 verses of the Bhagavatam from Narada to Vyasa. And Vyasa concludes, yes. Um, Kimba Bhagavata Dharma, Naprayena Nirupita. Priya Paramahamsanan Tadeva Yajuta Priya. I didn't describe the glories of Achuta Priya clearly. I mean, Radharani, Srimati Radharani, Radha Dasyam. <clears throat> Why did Mahaprabhu come again? Radha Mahima to tell the world the greatness of the greatest devotee of Krishna. She is Krishna, she extends Krishna consciousness to everyone. Guru Maharaj said, faith is the halo of Srimati Radharani. Right. When we, Indra, yesterday, so sad, <laughs> we're hearing about Indra, and so humble, uh, but he, uh, um, I'm gonna say, um, I, Indra, and also, oh, Brahma. We didn't discuss Brahma so much, but, and the, both of them, Indra Mohan, Brahma Vimohan. Brahma says, no me jite abra bapuse tari dambaraya. Krishna, it's very difficult to, to see you as, uh, as you are. <laughs> you know, reality the beautiful. Because what? Abra Bapu, because of your, this cloud-like uh, complexion of yours. Like we told about Kala Chan, like we know moon, moonlight, we see the moon, but if you can imagine a black moon with moonshine, that's a little different. So he's saying it's very difficult to see you, assess who you are, but abra, tari dambaraya. But when you're dressed in your lightning yellow garments, when you're dressed, when you're in the association of your potency, Srimati Radharani, then we can see you. It's through her that we can see you. That's Guru Maharaj's parsing of that first line of that first prayer, the 14th chapter of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Brahma Stuti. She reveals Krishna 
as Gurudev said last time we were in Navadeep with him, and he, we know like this Goranga Setu bridge, Madhusudan Maharaj knows very well. Sometimes Gurudev, he's going to Kolkata, Calcutta, and gets in the car and you have to drive this way. And then you go around and then by the time you make it to the Gauranga Setu bridge already, Guru Maharaj is sending Hari Charan Prabhu, he'll be waiting there to stop Srila Govinda Maharaj from going to Calcutta. <laughs> so Guru Maharaj wants you to come back. So much love, affection, deep spiritual attachment Guru Maharaj has for Gurudev. And then Gurudev was saying like, he told me once that, he said, before I ask Guru Maharaj any question, I see what is his mood. <laughs> and so he said also, so then sometimes he knows their songs Gurudev knew from his childhood. His father was a prophet, you know, sometimes Gurudev was saying, my father was Sahaji a singer. <laughs> so Gurudev knew all those songs. And when he came and he fill in for his father sometimes when his father couldn't. When he came to the Mutt, Guru Maharaj said, you have to like, you know, keep those in your pocket. Put them on the shelf for now. Ticked off all these songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, 30 or so songs, saying, well, that should keep him busy for a while. Gurudev learned those songs in a week. And a few days, he knew all of them. Right? But every now and then, the two of them behind closed doors, sometimes Guru Maharaj would say, sing that one song from your, you know, your father's hand. And so he was saying, can hear or not? Madhusudama seems to be making, can't hear. Your, your voice ended, it went silent, but now you're back, Maharaj. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> now I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, it's all good. Okay. I'm just repeating, like someone said, these are high things. Yes, Krishna consciousness is the highest thing. There's nothing higher than that. So every now and then, we may say some high thing, and maybe we do it wrong, and maybe we commit an offense. So Guru Maharaj says, so what do we do? chaitanya bole so Gurudev would say, this one, Tunga Mani Mandire, that this song would always put Guru Maharaj in a good mood. So if he would sing that, then, because sometimes he really needs to go to Calcutta. So he's saying Tunga Mani Mandire, and that puts Guru Maharaj in a, more than a good mood, a divine mood. So, and then Gurudev can kind of ease himself away. Also in service to the lotus feet of Guru Maharaj. But that last visit in Navadip, when Gurudev was singing different songs, one, I said, what is that song? He said, Yasomati, Yashodamati, she is um, doing arati to the lotus face of Krishna. That's one song he's singing. And, but this, Tunga Mani Mandire, and I said, Guru, what is, you've mentioned this different times, what does that mean, Tunga Mani Mandire? And he said, oh, Maharaj, it means that Srimati Ratarani, her heart is like a lighthouse of Krishna Prem, illuminating the whole spiritual world. Like Guru Maharaj's Gayatri Sloka, Bargo Bhai Vrishabhanu Jatma Bibhavai Ka Radhana Sri Puram. <clears throat> so, Gora Gata Grananti Nityam Rupa Nuga Sri Kriti Mati. So, in the Rupa Nuga line, Guru Gauranga 
Radha Jitasa. It's like in the Das Goswami Sloka, Nama Shrestam Manamapi Sachi Putra Tras Rupam Rupam Tasya Grajama Dupurim Maturim Gostavatim Radha Kundam Giri Maho Radhika Madhavasam Guru Gauranga Radha Jitasa. It's the same thing in the Rupa Nuga line with this aspiration. And Srila Gurudev pointed out also with regard to Das Goswami, normally the devotees, they never say that they've got, right? The genuine devotees, they're never um, declaring any sort, any sort of uh, um, achievement or attainment. He's saying, but here Das Goswami is saying, by the grace of Sri Guru, you know, prapto, all these things have come to us by the grace of prapto jascha pratita kripaya sri gurun tanmatosmi the namasre stam all of the things he mentioned come by the grace of sri guru sri guru and his grace without which sri guru says we are lifeless clay guru goranga radha jitasha uh, and what's the last line? She, huh? Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kola Dweep, uh, the Aparad, Bunzanir Pot. Sri Chaitanya Saraswatma. So Guru is saying, these things you hear at the Sri Chaitanya Saraswatma. You don't hear other things. You hear the line of Mahaprabhu as it's coming to the Goswamis, the Bhaktivinoda Thakur, to Srila Saraswati Thakur. These conceptions. Right? Sravana Sadhan is written on the mat. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, what do you call it? Welded grill. Is once uh, Tirta Maharaj, when in the days when Gaudiya Mat had very little funds, rented the Nat Mandir. What are they going to have from some other line, some kind of spiritual program? And when Saraswati Thakur heard, like some other line, they're going to be broadcasting here. He said, no, uh, "But we've taken the problem. We've taken deposit. Give the money back." He said, and you must put up this grill, and it says, Shravana Sadhan. When you come here, right, you're the exception. And, you know, but <laughs> Hare Krishna. So when you come here, don't be like the lizard and make these lizard sounds. When you come here, you're just supposed to hear. The divine concepts of Guru Maharaj, Saraswati Thakur, Gurudev, like that. Not broadcast, not say any other thing, not hear any other thing. Right. <clears throat> Where do we go next? Where do we go from here? <laughs> so Maharaj, we started, we're in color deep still. So Maharaj, I think we need a little kirtan to get us going to Champahata, or Champahati and Samudraga. And Maharaj, it's quite a long walk. They do start early in the morning. So maybe we need at least three Mahamantras for this part of the journey. It's the beginning of our actual uh, Parikrama today. Okay. <laughs>
So we are not the Lord himself. He as a dwarf with just three paces can cover the whole universe. But we are small jiva souls. But with our Sankirtan, with our few paces and few Mahamantras, we've covered the whole distance from Kolodeep, Chaitan Shri Chaitanya Sarasatmat, and we've come down to Champahati Maharaj. And if you would like to say, or Something from here, Champahati and Jayadev Goswami. Yes, I shall try, Hare Krishna. In that Navadip Dham Mahatmyam, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, like how this name came about, because there's one Gopi Asasagi, Champak Lata. Right? And the Champak flower. We have here in Thailand also, here it's called Lilavadi. But um, is there one nearby? Someone can give me one? But can give one from, you can bring one. It's all right, these are okay. So um, Champak Lata, she's always giving these beautiful, collecting these flowers for the service of Radha and Krishna. And In the, the vast span of time in that place, there are also the, it's sort of a descended tradition that um, local people are also like uh, flower sellers, collectors, etc. They're doing that. And that place has some, in time acquired, some very auspicious history over the centuries, the ages, since that time. And just before the appearance of Mahaprabhu, Jayadev Goswami is living there with his wife Padmavati, writing Sri Gita Govinda. And uh, who is that king? Lakshman. Lakshman Saint. He hears the Dash Avatar Stotram. Like how um, he's captured by the beauty of that. The 10 different principal avatars, how they appear, you know, Keshava Dvita, Nara Hari Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hari. And, and he's asking, who, who wrote this song? And they're saying, oh, this. Kavi, the poet Jayadev. Oh, I'd like to meet him. And, and he arranges to meet Jayadev Goswami and, one, and invites him to his palace. And, Jay, and we're told he came in the garb of like a, a humble, poor Vaishnava. But then he's inviting him to the palace. Jayadev saying, not only will I not go, I'm going to leave. I, the, it's this type of association is so detrimental. I'm just going to leave the area and go to Puri. Right? And no, no, go, please don't, uh, you know, excuse my offense. And so he uh, conveys, uh, manages to um, convince Jayadev of his sincerity. 
me say, no, please just stay. Don't leave Navadvip. Uh, in fact, there's this one place that's very beautiful called Champa Hutti, Hut, you know, or whatever the original name was. He said, and if I, I'll build a place there for you and Padmavati, right? and you can stay there. And if I can just like visit from time to time, whenever you say. And I, I all right, and you can see actually you're very, I was just testing you. I can see actually you're a great devotee and you know, that was some test I did. So Jayadev and his wife, Padmavati, they go there and they're, they're taking these, these are Goloka Champa, but like this, these flowers, and they have this yellow center and they're using the flowers to worship the Lord, Nanda Kumar, Krishna. But uh, in time, Mahaprabhu appears to them with this color, the golden color that's in the center like that. So they're, they've never seen this divine form of the Lord before. They're so happy. And he's saying, Jayadev, when I, I'm going to appear in Nadia soon and inaugurate the Sankirtan movement, but privately, what, what I love is your Gita Govinda. You don't know how much pleasure and happiness this gives to me. And so I will relish your Gita Govinda. Uh, he said, but now, for now, I want you and your wife, because the, the, uh, that king, he had asked them to live there for a couple of years. He said, now I want the two of you to go to Nilachala, to Puri. So then Mahaprabhu vanishes. They faint in ecstasy when they come to. They're crying. Then they're saying, such a wonderful, inconceivably beautiful form of the Lord we saw. But what offense did we commit that we're being, he told us to get out of Navadip Dham and go to Jagannath Puri. So they're saying, what if we, they're, and that, so they have the darshan of Mahaprabhu, but they're thinking that they, they're being asked to leave on account of some offense. How these are, this is pure devotion. Right? So the Lord, like an Akash Bani, you know, div, a divine voice from the sky says, you have not committed any offenses. Actually, in a, a former time, you expressed your heart's aspiration to go to Jagannath Puri. And actually, Jagannath Dev, he wants to see you. That's why I'm telling you, Lord Jagannath wants you to come. So then, oh, well. <laughs> so, and that, but even then, with tears streaming down their eyes, they're walking, they keep looking back at Navadvip, and it says the eight petals. Remember in the center, Antadvip, nine uh, Mayapur, but eight petals around, and tearfully, they, they say goodbye to all the devotees, please forgive our offenses. That's the Vaishnavas and their way. And go to Puri, and so, uh, and the ODC devotees like to lay claim to Jayadeva Goswami, also the Mahaprabhu. They'll say, sometimes they'll say like, and now they, they didn't understand Mahaprabhu. Then. So he had to leave. So Guru Maharaj's joke, he said, they say, Navadip he rejected, Puri he collected. <laughs> and it's, I mean, we can say, the Lord is allowing them to think in this way. So they want to claim him as their, like, for Mahaprabhu to really, you know, be himself, he had to come to Puri. And there's some truth to that, of course. But so they lay claim to Jayadev Goswami as well. But uh, when we hear from Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami <clears throat> and the Chaitanya Charitamritam, that after the um, public service of Nam Sankirtan and inundating the world in Krishna Prem, basically. <clears throat> that and given release by Advaita and his mystic poem 
uh, that Mahaprabhu, in the last 12 years of his manifest pastimes, behind closed doors in the Gangbira, he's with uh, Ramananda Roy and Srup Damodar uh, and relishing the Krishna Karnamritam, Bilba Mangal Thakur, the Jagannath Balavanatak of Ramananda Roy, uh, songs of Vidyapati and Chandidas, and the Gita Govinda of Jayadev Goswami. And Srila Gurudev liked to quote this one verse as a line from a verse from there that also was very favorite to Mahaprabhu and Guru Dev said, we, like good for chanting, but not like telling, explaining. Right? But you can hear some of the beauty of the poetry of Jayadev Goswami. He says, Lalita Labanga Lata Parishilana Kamala Malaya Samire Maru Karabi Karakarambita Ko Kila Kujita Kunja Kutire. It's so sweet and beautiful. The sound, even the sound of it, without uh, trying to um, go into the details of the meaning. So, Mahaprabhu, it's very favorite to him. Uh, only few verses are given in um, Chaitanya Charitamritam. And particularly in the Ramananda Sambad, where Srila Guru Maharaj derives his ontological method. And he says uh, that uh, uh, quality gives us relief from mathematics. Right? What he means to say, so quality, he's saying, gives us relief. Mathematics means here quantity. How is it described there? In a short form, the purpose is, again, thematically, consistently, to uh, express the exalted, you know, the supremely exalted glories of Srimati Radharani. So in that section, just with one or two verses, it's the quality giving relief from mathematics in the following way. There's reference to the Rasa Leela. And there said, there are various descriptions, a billion gopis. Let's work with that. A billion. Right? Gurudev once said, what is the difference between Narayana Vaikuntha and Krishna? And by Kunta, one Narayan, one Lakshmi for one Narayan. Krishna, Lakshmi is the Hasra Sata Sam Brahma, Savior Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of Lakshmis for one Krishna. Therefore, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. So that Krishna, and seeing, and we're told that Guru Maharaj's deity, Gandharva, Srimati and Saraswati Tagore's deity, Gandharvika, who's singing and dancing to uh, charm Krishna, to keep Krishna charmed. Right? So her singing and dancing exceeds all others. Right? Uh, and seeing the equal treatment, we're told she leaves the Rasa Lila in a huff having displayed superior, inconceivably superior singing and dancing, and leaves. And then Krishna, with the remaining billion, feels the entire experience has gone down, the quality of the experience. I would say a billion minus one, shouldn't that be still like a billion? But this is the quality that gives relief from mathematics. Absent this one, Krishna is saying, what happened? The whole experience has gone down. It's not the same as it was previously. And then he goes searching for her. Right? So it says, and that verse given there is from Jayadev Goswami's Gita Govindam. 
Radham Adaya Hridaye. Radham Adaya. Taking Radharani in his heart exclusively. Tatyaja Brajasundari. Brajasundari means all these billions of beautiful Braja gopis. He rejects all of them and goes in search for her. That's how they're showing what, who she is comparatively. And remember, they're inconceivably qualified. Right? Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavi Tabis Tabiriya Aids and Nijarupadaya Kalavi. So a billion of such qualified, he leaves all of them to search for this one. That's the way of telling us how supremely qualified she is to the point of canceling all others. <clears throat> and so, but Jayadev Goswami, so he's writing so many things in his Gita Govinda. Again, but he is so humble. Like Guru says, never be overly confident in your own judgment or assessment of things. You know, Bhakti Vinod Thakur enlists Jagannath Das Babaji to certify this is Mahaprabhu's birthplace. Right? Sanatan Goswami is asking uh, a subordinate, Jagannath, Jagannath the Pandit, should I stay or should I go? Right? Later we find that that did not please Mahaprabhu, but it shows the humility of Sanatan Goswami. Ru, you know, Rupa Goswami. Uh, uh, changing his book one in one instance for Balabhacharya. One time Sanatana Goswami Prabhu telling him also, because he made some comparison, the gopis when they're in the kunda, that their hair, it looks like snakes. And Sanatana Goswami said, I don't know if that, that's unusual poetry. So Rupa, oh, I'll change it. You know. Then Sanatana Goswami is going back and some girls are bathing. And he goes, look out, girls, there's some snakes coming. And he goes, oh, he sees it's just their black hair floating in the water. And he goes, oh, what Rupa's written is so perfect. <laughs> so all of the, that's how the, the real higher Vaishnavas, they always live in, in the, you know, in the, with the uncertainty principle. They're never certain of their devotion. They never uh, assert that. They never self-certify. Right? You could say after millions of lifetimes that someone could come to the point of answering the flute call of Krishna to participate in these divine pastimes. And then what are we told in the Bhagavatam? Krishna is saying, this is, this is not dharmic. You're crossing the principles of dharma. You should go home to your husbands and your families. This is very adharmic. <laughs> and what do we thought? What is the Braja Gopi's response? Kritva Mukanya Vasucha Smasenena Shushad Bimba Dorani Charanena Buva Likantya Asrai Upata Mashibi Kuchukum Kumani Tashtur Mijunta Uruduka Borash Matushnim. They hang their heads down and start crying. They're scratching the ground with their lotus feet. And they're, why? Saying, because they know Krishna is controlled by Prem and they're being rejected by Krishna. So, no Prema Gandosti Durapi Mehoro. They have no love for Krishna. If they did, he wouldn't be sending them away. So, they're thinking then, on what basis did we give up our husbands, our children, our families, cross the principles of do all these things? It was not out of love for Krishna, it's some sort of self-interest or uh, in something impure. That's what they're saying. And their heads are, and the crying and the mascara is running and they're scratching. But what, they don't go home. They stay. Like Guru Maharaj said, if you can realize you have no devotion after whatever, how much whatever energy you've invested in the pursuit of Krishna consciousness, if you can admit honestly, candidly, that you have no devotion, but you don't leave, Gurmar said, then you might be a devotee. <laughs> he didn't say you are, 
but he said, you might be. <laughs> because the devotee would not leave. They have no other shelter. Right? I have no devotion, but I have no other shelter. I have no other aspiration. Right? So, uh, why did I say that? Oh, so then, oh yes. So, uh, Jayadeva Goswami, some inspiration comes to him to express something that uh, he's never expressed before. Nothing like it has ever been expressed. And he's think, when he, he's going to write this in the poetry, and then he's thinking, this is too much. What I'm thinking of writing here and the divine pastimes of Radha and Krishna, this, this is just too much. I put the pen down, go bathe, take prasadam, <laughs> you know, calm down. <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when I understood that I was no longer going to be in one situation and I was going to be in a new situation, and I went to Guru Maharaj and my head was like spinning and really, and Guru Maharaj is going, take prasadam. You take prasadam and we will talk tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. you take prasadam, Govinda Maharaj, give him prasadam and we will talk tomorrow. And then by the time the next thing, everything was good. The prasadam rest and giant anything like, this is too much, too heady. Go take bathe, calm down. The bathing will make you calm. Then take some prasadam and then pick up the pen. So, but at this time, we're told Krishna comes in the form of Jayadeva Goswami. And his wife saying, Oh, my husband, you know, he's a little uh, early today. But she has everything ready, again, going to serve him the prasadam. And he's saying, you know, oh, Padma, can you bring that, the, the book I'm working on? There's something I want to add in there. And he's like, oh, okay. She brings it back anyway. All right, you can put it back. And, you know, he's taking the prasadam. It's very nice, wonderful. He leaves. Then their system was the wife will serve the husband. And then afterwards, then she'll take. So now Padma Vati, she's happily taking this prasadam and maybe today it has an extra special quality. Yeah. And then Jayadev, her husband comes and goes, Padma, what, you know, this is, you know, not the etiquette. You know, what are you doing? Why are you taking prasadam? She, what do you mean? You finished? Don't you? She's thinking, May, my husband losing his mind a little bit. Don't you remember? You came here, told me, go get the book. I brought the book. You wrote something in the book, took the book back. You took prasadam and went, bring that book. Brings the book. And you see, written in the hand, in his hand, by Krishna, the thing that was, came in the heart of Jayadeva Goswami, but he was hesitating to express. He said, Dehi Padapalavam Udaram. That Krishna falls at the feet of Radharani and saying, I want your feet on my head. Give me the service of your holy lotus feet. It's not, I can't, this, what am I thinking? How can I, that her feet will be put on Krishna's head? Oh. No. Krishna wanted the world to know that, that he, submits himself to the lotus, that he takes the feet of Radharani on his head in service. He aspires for Radha Dasyam. And then Jayadev can understand, Krishna himself wants this to be expressed. Then he's saying, Padma, bring me that prasadam. <laughs> then he's taking, they're very happy. And, but Radharani, uh, and Guru, they will not be happy if we don't mention one other verse from Guru Maharaj in this connection. 
from the sloka collection of Srila Rupa Goswami, Gurmars would quote it sometimes. He said, it should not be said. And then he said, he like looked both ways and he said, still I do. <laughs> but then he didn't say it. Then he gave around 20, 30 minutes of prerequisite. Then he said it. Uh, and there's Srila Guru Maharaj saying that very thing. See, the, in the Madhya Leela, second chapter, remember, the, it's, there's Adi Leela and Shesh Leela, the beginning pastimes and the final pastimes. That's how the books are, the Charitamritam. But the final pastimes, the Shesh Leela, is divided into two parts, Madhya Leela and Antya Leela. But it's really beginning pastimes, final pastimes. So in the Madhya Leela, that's where it starts uh, in earnest, you could say, I mean, as a matter of speaking. And Kaviraj Goswami, who's arthritic, legally blind, in his 90s, saying like, I may not live to express all of these things. So in the chapter two of Madhya Leela, he's saying, I need to give it now. Gurudev could by heart quote all of these verses, it's around 70 or so that are there. That's it. Everything you want to say, he says there and he said, and if I get the opportunity, I will expand upon that later. But one of them, and everything there is very beautiful. And there's not the time permitting to say, so, Guru Maharaj said so many things, wonderful things about that. But the point I mean to make here is that what Guru Maharaj says, that where it says, you know, Krishna Prem Jambu Nada Hema. Where he's saying, Akaitava Krishna Prem Jambu Nada. That Krishna Prem is not a thing of this world. You know? It's coming from Mahaprabhu, but this, these are all sentiments of Srimati Radharani herself. So he's saying, it's not, you can't find it. It's not a thing of this world. It's, a, it's like Jambu Nada Hem, that there's legendary rivers of gold in the uh, heavenly world, right? So there aren't rivers of gold in this world. That doesn't mean there aren't rivers of gold in another world. So that's the thing. Krishna Prem, it's not a thing. That's why it, uh, it cancels Sahajaism. It is not to be expressed in this plane. You try and bring it down here, it go, uh, the Pujala Ragapat, Gaurava Bange, Matala Sadhujana Bishayarange. It becomes rotten. So he says, Krishna, a koit of a Krishna Prem. What is Bhairavya? Dharma projita koita bhota. Koita means cheating. A koita means like pure, this a koita, the, the pure. It's not a thing of this world. He said, and na prema gandasti darapi mehoro. And I haven't got a scent of the fragrance of Krishna Prem. What to speak of a drop of that divine substance? And Guru Maharaj said in this talk, he said, it's so high, so noble, so wonderful. One's coming in connection with that substance. Separation is impossible. If you really have that, to become separated, you will have to die. You cannot live in this world. You will have to die. And Guru Maharaj said, it is so divine, so high. And he said, so heart swallowing. So then he came by a long way to this Kempa Dante Lutasi sloka given by Rupa Goswami as collection. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. It's the same one. Um, so, so it's in their divine pastime. Sometimes there's 
uh, how do you say, a lover's quarrel. And he said, sometimes there's a reason, sometimes for no reason. <laughs> but in one instance, Krishna feels he's the offender. So he should apologize. So he's bowing down to touch the feet of Srimati Radharani and beg forgiveness for his misbehavior. And she is saying, there's no fault on you. What are you doing? She's, uh, what does he say? You know, shuddering. Oh, oh, what are you doing? You're, you know, if anyone is at fault, it is me. Just see, this is how Radhan Krishna, he thinks that he, he's apologizing, that he is wrong. And she's saying, no, if anyone should apologize, it's me. How sweet they are. So, and Gurudev could express these things. Uh, with his classic um, humor, ontologically based humor. So I've mentioned this before that when in his final pastimes, when he cannot take all the different types of prasadam, uh, still the Bengali devotees, they like to cook so many things. So they're kind of secretly dropping these things on the plates of the sannyasis of the good fortune to take prasadam with Srila Gurudev. And Gurudev, when he normally does not say anything while taking prasadam. As one day he starts singing, he's saying, he's saying, oh, you know, he's singing this song, one of these songs he knows, you know. But he's doing it with, in such a dramatic way that I took the cue to make an inquiry. <laughs> you know, so I said, Gurudev, uh, what is that song you're singing? And he went, oh, Maharaj. He said, Radharani is very unhappy. I said, why is she unhappy? And he said, because, he said, not only is Krishna going to the house of another gopi, but he's going through her courtyard on the way to that house. <laughs> so that she can see he's going to the house. And therefore, she is very unhappy. <laughs> and what he means to say is, so these things they're putting on your plate, it's bad enough they're putting them on your plate, but they're bringing them right in front of me and then putting it on your plate. <laughs> So in an instance like that, it's something that is so, um, like, uh, what's the word? Um, simple and normal from one point of view. But look where his mind is going and his heart. That simple thing is taking him to this very deep plane. These slokas are coming out. And in a sweet way and with a little bit of humor, he is elevating our conception of things. Hare Krishna. And that mat, the Gorgadadhar mat, right? we know that when Saki Churan Babu uh, gave the land for Sri Chaitanya Saraswat mat to Srila Guru Maharaj, he had to clear the land. It was heavy physical work, as you can understand. One person helped him, who was young at the time, and he was known forever as Satish Prabhu, uh, who was so fortunate. Like sometimes when he was suffering in different ways, he would be allowed to sleep in Guru Maharaj's room on the floor. Like, here's Guru Maharaj's bed, and he's on the floor next to Guru Maharaj. Just to get Guru Maharaj's divine, uh, you know, radiance and Vaishnavata, be in that zone, he would feel that will cure him of anything inauspicious. So he later became Nayananda Das Babaji, but he helped Guru Maharaj clear the land for the Mat, and he had the Seva of Madhusudan Maharaj, you know, of the Gorgadadhar deities. And the, just the one thing I wanted to say about it was that Srila Saraswati Thakur, interestingly, 
he, when their seva was not so um, um, paka, Saraswati Thakur said, I'm not interested in get, getting the ownership of this mat. He said, what I want is the seva. I just want the seva to go on very nicely there. Who owns it, they can, whoever, let it go on in that way. But I want that the seva will be nice for Gorga Dadhar. So that was arranged through Sri Gaudiya Math. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, yes, we are all swimming in the ocean of this Harikata, Maharaj, and getting lost on our journey. But let us come back on our Parikrama yeah. because we've got Paramananda Prabhu with us and he can say, he can take us to the next place. Well, actually, Maharaj, there are many places, but we need to just briefly come somewhere. But I know that Paramananda would like to say something about Saranga Thakur and Vasudev Dutta. Yeah. And uh, so let's have a couple of Maha Mantras because we really need to, uh, maybe you have to chant fast the Maha Mantras too, because we need to go a long way in a short time. Start with your Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna. Two. Yes, of course, the Kirtan group. <laughs> Then the microphone to Paramananda Prabhu, maybe, and he can give us some illumination of where we are and the Vaishnavas here. Well, Marge, I guess we're in Modadru Madvip, and we're at the temple where the deities of Sharanga Thakurs are worshipped, and that is Radha Gopinath, and there is also another set of deities, Madan Gopal by Vasudev Datta. Mm. And I guess. If it's still there, there is a huge and old Bakul tree, uh -huh. which is also a, a wonderful story connected to that. And really, like Krishna Kraj Goswami is saying in Chaitanya Shiritamrita, it is impossible to mention all the parshats and beloved associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they're all wonderful. The stories connected to them are amazing. But since we're here, we have this opportunity to glorify Sharanga Thakur. And we hear that he was a contemporary of Mahaprabhu. Actually, he was there even before Mahaprabhu appeared. He was a little bit senior. And he joined all the kirtans. He, particip he participated in the night kirtans in Shivastakur's place. And really, it was this very unique Vaishnava. And just like Lokanath Das Goswami, and we're more familiar with Lokanath Das Goswami, he preferred the solitary bhajan. He didn't want it so much people around him. So his bhajan was to chant the holy names and then worship Radha Gopinath. And he would just collect flowers, uh, roots, uh, vegetables, fruits, and sometimes somebody gives the nations. And then he would cook it, serve the deities, and then the next thing he will do, he will just join Mahaprabhu in his kirtans. And Mahaprabhu would come sometime and see him. And in seeing the devotion of Sharanga Thakur, he was always teasing him, saying, why are you not giving your mercy? Why are you not sharing with anybody? You're so stingy. And then- Because he's not accepting disciples. He's not accepting disciples, yeah. <laughs> and then he said, no, 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 I don't want to do anything with the disciples. Please, please don't ask me. But Mahaprabhu kept asking. So one day, Sharanga Thakur said, okay, just for you, I will do it. And tomorrow morning, the first person I see, I will give him initiation. He will become my disciple. And of course, he goes to Ganga as every day and he chants his mantras, he's taking bath and then something, and it is dark. And I remember something like that happened to me when I was chanting my guides in my poor God. <laughs> a dead body touched me, <laughs> but I wasn't a Sharanga Thakur. <laughs> so when that happened to Sharanga Thakur, he saw this body floating on the raft and it touched Sharanga Thakur and immediately he accepted that person and he chanted mantra in the dead body's ear and it came alive and was a young boy Murari. and he said my name is Murari how can I serve you please tell me what should I do 
And then later on, he asked Murari to continue the worship of Radha Gopinath. And he became known as Murari Thakur. Right. It is also mentioned in Briha, sorry, uh, Chaitanya Bhagavata that sometime Sharanga Thakur, he was very, he had a very peculiar personality, you know, very special type of devotee. He goes into the forest and then he catches tigers and he just plays with the tigers like cats. And sometimes he catches a python, he plays with the python. You know, who can understand the pastimes of such devotees? And another devotee whose deities are there, Madan Gopalas, Vasudev Datta Thakur. And we hear explanation, we hear the commentaries by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He says that everybody regards Jesus Christ as a great savior of the, uh, of the West. But here is Vasudev Datta. The Jesus Christ, he wanted to accept all the sins of the people. But Vasudev on earth, on this planet. But Vasudev Datta, he wanted to relieve all the living beings, not just human beings, but everyone of their sins and their faults in the whole universe. So here is the, the savior of the East, Vasudev yeah. Datta. And when Mahaprabhu is giving blessings, he, all the devotees are going back to Bengal. He's saying, what can, how, what can I give you, Vasudev? And Vasudev is saying, You're, you are the supreme personality of Godhead. You can do anything. So give me my wish. Grant me my wish. Let me suffer for the sins of all the living beings in this universe. But free them from their sins. Give them liberation. Give them Krishna prema. And Mahaprabhu smiled and said, it is done. And you don't have to suffer for that. They are already liberated. You don't have to worry. Krishna can do anything. Why would he make you suffer? It is done. And then Mahaprabhu, it is also in Chaitanya Bhagavata. One day he declares that my body belongs to Vasudev. He is expressing his love and affection for Vasudev. He said, my body belongs to him. If he wants to sell me, I am in agreement with that. He can sell me anywhere he wants to. So he declaring that to all the devotees. Anyhow, these are two great personalities. Shila Sharanga Takur Ki Jai. Jai. Jai Shila Vasudev Dhatu Takur Ki Jai. 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 And Bakul tree. One moment. <laughs> yeah. Interesting story with the Bakul tree. So it is said that Mahaprabhu goes there once and he sees that the Bakul tree is sick. And then he says, Oh, it is the tree you're meditating. This is your Bhajan Kutir. What are you going to do about it? And the Sharanga Takur says, Everything is by your mercy. If you wish it to survive, continue living, then it will live. If you're not, then it will leave the body. And then Mahaprabhu embraces the tree. And the tree becomes free from disease. And they said, till this day, the very same tree is still there. But I haven't been there for at least 13 years. So I don't know, Maharaj, if it's still there. Jai. And then... As, as we know, then we are not only making the big parakrama, but we're making the big parakrama in a short time. So it's not possible to cover every place that we would normally go, stop and hear some Hare Kata. But today we con continue around and it's a beautiful, really it's a super beautiful uh, parakrama today through the rice fields. And literally I've put a video camera for more than half an hour in one place and the trail of our devotees continuously coming through th through that that means it must be at least a kilometer long of Vaishnavas coming through the paths in the rice fields in fully in nature very sweet then Maharaj, we come to Vidyanagar we come to Mamgachi we come to the house of Narayani the birthplace of uh, Srila Brindavan Das Thakur and Marge, wherever you may like to select to say something for our nourishment, then we are in this. The, the, actually, Mangachi is the last place before returning to uh, Kaladeep, to returning to our mat. Then we can say when Vrindavan Das Thakur, his mother is Narayani, that she is the niece of Srivas Thakur. And when she was a, a girl, when me and my pundits starting to get inspired about his Nam Sankirtan movement. And he's saying uh, uh, to the devotees about the, when they're having a problem with the Kaji. And I remember Chan Kaji, by the way, is Kongsa from Krishna Leela. 
So he gets to play this role there. But uh, so Mahavru, he's telling the devotees, like, you get a, bring all of those uh, Muslim uh, leaders and saints and, and bring them here. He's saying, and I will show that I will make every living being chant Krishna Nam. Like in Jarakanda Forest, he made the tigers and elephants scream the holy name of Krishna in ecstasy. Right? He said, I will make every living being, the birds, the bees, the tree, everyone will vibrate the holy name of Krishna and with Krishna praying. And the devotees are, they have a look of incredulity, like he's saying, you don't believe me. Right? And he turns to Narayani and he says, Narayani, chant Krishna Nam. And with Krishna, with Premic tears, cry and Krishna Prem, taking the name of Krishna. And immediately, she's a little like five year old, she starts shivering, taking the name of Krishna, tears pouring down her eyes. That was his local example of that. And we're told she got some prasadam from the Lord. And later she became the mother of the exalted biographer of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Vrindavan Das Thakur, the great uh, devotee of Nityananda Prabhu, who uh, presented Sri Chaitanya Bhagwat, which, uh, you know, actually, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami, the author of Charitamritam, he's the one who has so much praise for Sri Chaitanya Bhagwat. And saying, it's so perfect and so wonderful that would be an apparat if I were to describe any th the things that are there. So I, if I must, I will refer to it in, in a sutric-like form. Or if there's something that, fearing the increased volume of his work, he couldn't express, I will give that. But really, Kaviraj is very humble. We know he's giving the internal reason for the descent of Mahaprabhu, but he's um, ecstatic with praise of the Chaitanya Bhagwat of uh, Brindavan Das Thakur, and who, and he says that this Haridas Pandit, uh, or the, uh, the Panda of the Madan Mohan, Madan Gopal deity, that he used to sing the Ch Chaitanya Bhagwat, and remember, the audience, all the hearers, they're all Mahabhagavatas. So it's, uh, he compares him to a moon and all the Mahabhagavat listeners to stars. And he said, and his recitation of Chaitanya Bhagwat appears to be like uh, rivers of nectar descending from the moon, nourishing all the Mahabhagavat stars. And that Vrindavan Das Thakur, when, when, I, when I first read Chaitanya Bhagavat, I kind of think like, this book is all about Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda, Nityananda, Nityananda. Because he's building the strongest foundation as he will present Goranga Mahaprabhu's pastimes. But in his fervent devotion to Nityananda Prabhu, at one point he, he's saying so repeatedly, He's imploring, begging the readers to accept the lotus feet of Gaur and Nityananda. And he's saying, um, but if you don't, he's saying, then I want to, you know, kick, your, kick you in the face with my left foot. I kick you in the head with my left foot. So, Gaur said, the Sahajyas say, oh, Kaviraj Goswami is saying, Jagai Madhai Hoite Mui So humble is Kaviraj Goswami. And then here Vrindavan Asana would say, if you don't accept what I'm saying, you accept the glories of Nityananda, they're going to kick you in the head. But what kind of, that is not humility. I remember when I first went to Bengal, the Bengal, they go like, Sadhu doesn't become angry. They always say like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, then Saraswati Thakur says, in response to these Sahajya operatic assertions, he said, oh, no, no, you don't understand. Vrindavan Das Thakur, he's so merciful that with his lotus foot, he's opened a new channel for the Lord's mercy. Right? And Guru Maharaj's 
always giving the perfect example, says like, and we've seen sometimes there's some little boy like, and they're like clinging to their mother's skirt or something. And then the parent, they're like talking to someone and the little kid will like kick somebody and then run and hide behind his mother's skirt, you know. Then what happens, the parents have to go, oh, we're so sorry. I mean, he's normally very well behaved. Why did you, you know, and they have to compensate for the misbehavior of the child by offering themselves to the uh, so-called victim, you know. So he's saying, Vrindavan Nas Thakur, but the merciful, merciful you know, movement of his lotus foot, he's created this new channel. He said, then Gore and Nityananda, they will have to give themselves to that person to compensate for Vrindavan Das Thakur's apparent misbehavior. So how merciful, you wouldn't take it any other way. He made a new channel for that mercy. <laughs> now, and we understand who is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tagore. And in this place, the last thing I want to say is about Vidya Nagar, Vidya Bachaspati, who's connected with Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, Gopinath, uh, this family line, you know, they're all great scholars. I mean, you know, Vidya Bachaspati, a place called Vidya Nagar and various names. And so, uh, as we mentioned the other day, when after five years of sannyas, uh, uh, you can visit your hometown. So Nimai Pandit coming back to Navadip, but now he's Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We told the throngs, the hundreds of thousands, millions, Shiva, Brahma disguised as human beings. Devata's coming to have a glimpse of Goranga Mahaprabhu, his inconceivable beauty. He leaves the Padukas for Vishnu Priya and Sachimat and proceeds and he goes to Vidyanagar, to this house of uh, Vidya Bachaspati. Right? And uh, trying for some uh, relative anonymity. Right? But everyone hears that he's there. So the, the thousands, millions of people, they're running to this place. And we're told, like, if, when they want to cross the Ganga, like you've seen in India, they have those big pots. Some of them are so big, you could like fit a couple people in them, you know, and, like push that across. Or if, if the boat, like Madhu Siddhar is mentioned, the devotee, it's a thing apparently with devotees to just overload a boat to the point that it sinks. It apparently is a pastime. So they're doing that. Otherwise, they're carrying, you know, floating over somehow. We've seen Gurudev make a raft out of the uh, trunks of banana trees. You know, there's so many ways. But then the people, they're so impatient that they, the throng of mass, they just go into the water and it's like the water's part. It's better than the Bible. Okay, it's better than the Bible, trust me. <laughs> so the waters part like that, and then all the people go through, no one drowns. They're drowning and, you know, gore rasa, Krishna Prem. Uh, so then, and they're making their way to the house of Vidya Vachaspati, where Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is. And they and and he's inside he's telling mahaprabhu like they can hear what's going on outside people are climbing trees by divine potency even a twig on a tree can support a human body so every uh, just imagine trees covered with human beings they they want to see goranga mahaprabhu raso dama kamarbu dama dur damodula tanur 10 million cupids and full-blown cupidity, this type of radiance and beauty, they want to have a glimpse. And Bidja Vachaspati is inside with Mahaprabhu saying like, I think you're going to have to go outside. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and Mahaprabhu is like, 
<laughs> he's like, all right. And they open the doors and he, Mahaprabhu comes out there and everyone goes mad. Saying, you know, go to Hari. And, and he's waving his arms and they're taking Krishna Nam and the people, you know, floods of tears are coming down. And it's, this is the vision of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And why Guru Maharaj told me, he said, and the preference of uh, Navadvip over Puri, he said, stalwart devotees prefer Navadvip. And so, we're talking about live streaming reality for the higher devotees. These are not stories from long ago. It's live stream reality. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his song, he's there, he's in the crowd and he's looking up and he's seeing uh, Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And what is his prayer expressed in the song? He said, when will he give up these sannyas vesh and come again with us? And we will have, have our Prem, Rasa Kirtan and Srivas in the house of Srivas Thakur and Srivas Angam. Right. And Guru Maharaj draws this parallel. It's when the gopis are in Kurukshetra and they're saying, when will he give up the Maharaj Vesh, the dress of a king, and come back to Vrindavan on the banks of the Jamuna and we'll have our, you know, that divine dance, the Rasa Leela. That's their prayer. They want him to come back. And, and he's saying, and the, the parallel here, we're telling, you know, Gupta Vrindavan, Gupta Govardhan. So here in this pastime, there Bhaktivinoda Thakur expressing the heart of the Braja Gopi, but in Gorilila, when will he give up this and come and be with us again? We'll be singing and dancing in the house of Srivas. So it's very beautifully expressed there. And you could say in terms of a conclusion of this, that we started there, and we're concluding there. We started in the Yog Pit in Mayapur and the Srivasangam, and that's where the Panchatattva began this divine movement. And now we've, in a sense, gone full circle. And now we shall return yes. to Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Marsh. And at this place, uh, we have a late lunch, either in the compound of Naraini's, what is now a temple, which was her house, or just nearby, there's a field, a large field. And then from there, we ask the devotees, don't take the bus back, no. because you can. <laughs> Instead, chant Hare Krishna and join the Kirtan. So, Marsh, maybe now, the devotees there can chant the kirtan to take us back to Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Mahat back to the and, and conclude there. Yeah. Sing Hari Hari and you know some Jai Dao Sachi Nandan go to Hari Jai Dao Jai Dao. Hari Hari Namo Krishna Yadavaya Namo Hari Hari Namo Krishna Yadavaya Namo Yada Vaya Mada Vaya Kesu Vaya Namaha Goba Goba Ram Sri Madhu Sudhan Giri Dhari Gopi Nath Mada Namaha Sri Chaitanya Nityananda
Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paribhad Jaka Charja Asatara Sada Shri Shri Mahad Subhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Shri Bhakti Rakak Shridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Bhagavan Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Jai Saparikar Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharva Govinda Sundar Ki Ki Jai Shri Gorga Dadhar Ki Jai Shri Giriraj Govardhan Ki Jai Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Bhargava Ki Jai, Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adwaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Govinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Navadip Dham Ki Jai, Sri Navadip Dham Parikrama Ki Jai, Sri Kola Dweep Ki Dai, Sri Ritu Dweep Ki Dai, Sri Dhanu Dweep Ki Dai, Moda Druma Dweep Ki Dai, Gorga Dadhar Mandir Ki Dai, Vidya Nagar Ki Dai, Vrindavan Das Thakur Janmasthan Ki Dai, Sri Saranga Murari Thakur Ki Dai, Vasudev Dutt Thakur Ki Dai, Sri Jayadev Goswami Prabhu Ki Dai, Ganga Devi Jumuna Devi Bhakti Devi Tosi Devi Ki Dai, Om Vishnu Pad Vishpa Varenu Srila Esi Bhaktivedanta Shami Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Acharya Brinda Ki Jai Jai Srila Bhakti Nirmal Acharya Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Srila Bhakti Pavan Janardhan Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Srila Bhakti Kusum Asram Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Srila Bhakti Vijay Trivikram Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Srila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Shula Bhakti Bhimal Abhadut Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Seva Vrinda Ki Jai Soma Veda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Navadip Dham Parikrama Ki Jai Nithai Go Primanande Jai Shula Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaja Ki Jai Go Primanande There's Madhusudamara Zamananda Mohan Prabhu, Krishna Priya Didi, Dandavat, Avinava and Kelly Kadama, Dandavat, Ravendra Krishna Shama Balabha, Dandavat, Shama Sundar Prabhu, Dandavat, Rupa Vilas Prabhu, Dandavat, Divya Shakti, Dandavat, Deva Shish Prabhu and Ishanuga, Dandavat, Tapananandini Didi, Dandavat, we're in from England to Mexico. Where, where are you, Divya Shakti? She's in Texas. Texas. Right? Uh-huh. All right. She's in the Lone Star State. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so from the yes, Philippines to Texas to England to Mexico to Thailand. Pandita. Dandavat. Hare Krishna. In South Africa. Dandavat. Seva Rupa Didi. Dandavat. And Ekadashi Didi. And... Tomsk, Siberia, Dandavat, and oh, Madhavi Didi, and Hungary, Dandavat, Hare Krishna, Kum Kum Didi, and California, Dandavat, uh, Chaitanya Nithai Prabhu and Vrindavan, Dandavat, Dhananjaya Chaitanya Moi, and Rome, Dandavat, and Italy, Bonavi, she's also in Rome, Italy, Dandavat, Suresh Krishna Prabhu, and Riga, Dandavat. Sushmita and her friend, they're in Shanghai, in China, at the teacher's convention. <laughs> Dandavat. May Gaur and Nityananda bless you both. Gaur Gadadhar as well. Hare Krishna. Gurumar sent a donation at the time of Gaur Purnima once. And uh, um, it was, he said, a relatively small amount of money but it came at a time of great necessity. So Saraswati Thakur wrote back and said, your contribution was so extensive, I not only used it in the service of Mahaprabhu, but I used it in the service of Nityananda Prabhu also. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. There's a reason though. Chaitanya Nitai, that's right. Chaitanya and Nitai. <laughs> Nitai Chaitanya, Chaitanya Nitai. Nitai Chaitanya Bole Natsre Amaran. Tarun Prabhu and Masu Dandavat. Sri Hari Prabhu in Brazil, Dandavat. Amala Krishna Prabhu. Huh? 
in Riga, Dandavat, Ananda Lila, Dandavat, Praneshri, David, da yes. <laughs> she is the goddess of Zoom. Lalita Priya Didi Dandavat, Ajita Krishna Prabhu, and Abhazia, Keshavananda Prabhu, and Ram Sundar, there in Gupta Vrindavan, or oh yeah, and the Nectar Lake City, that lake, the Lilamrita Sar, Manasa Hongsa Charahata, you let your mind and heart swim in that, the nectarine lake of the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They're there looking after things. Subhashini Didi is in Ireland. Dandavat Gokulatarani Didi, she's in Abhazia, I think. Normally, Dandavat. Vijay Krishna Prabhu in London, Dandavat. Hare Krishna. Anindita, I'm not sure. Oh, well. Aha, Dandavat. Suchitra Didi, Dandavat. Ragaleka Didi, Dandavat. I think she's in St. Petersburg. Huh? Are you? All right. And the, the uh, Sandeep Krishna Prabhu and Maheshri Didi. They're looking after the Agarwal's house. <laughs> They've converted it into, uh, you know, uh, Goloka Vrindavan. Anantashesh Prabhu, Dandavat. You know how to say, where is the house of Nimai Pandit in Hindi? And the Chaitanya Bhagwa says that Nityananda Prabhu, when he was in Vrindavan, he learned Hindi. And so he, in Hindi, was saying, where is the house of Nimai Pandit? <laughs> so turn on their mic. I want to hear what that sounds like in Hindi. Um, it, Nimai Pandit ka ghar kaha hai? Hare Krishna. <laughs> Even Vijay Krishna Prabhu, you know, who knows how to say it in Bengali, he's okay with that. <laughs> in Bengali, just Nimai Pandit Gar Kotai. <laughs> Anyways, where did we leave? Bhakta Bandhu, Dandavat, Gora Nataraj Prabhu. They're on the way here. All right. I see the car's moving, and it's one of those self driving cars. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Kamala, Dhanrasan, Dhanavat. Oh, all right. Hare Krishna. Dhanavat. Kanu Priya Didi, Dhanavat. Raten Krishna Prabhu, Dhanavat. Gaur Chandra Prabhu, Dhanavat. Udharan, Dhanavat. Anjali, Dhanavat. Shamala Didi, Dhanavat. And this Nadia and Kiev, Gornarayan Prabhu, Dandavat. Where is Anjali? Do we know? Look, there's a tram. Where are you? Vinitsa. Oh, that's near Govindaland, right? Yeah, okay. There's Yuvati. And Simeshwar, and who's the little girl with you? Huh? Kalindi Devidasi, Kalindi Kumari. Hare Krishna. <laughs> oh, Darjalila, Dandavad, Chandrakanti, and Sudevi. Sudevi, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. <laughs> They're in China. Okay. Where? Gore Narayan Prabhu. Dandavat. That's the best kind of Narayan. It's Gore Narayan. Hare Krishna. And did we leave anyone else out? I think. All right. Hare. Oh, the next page. Mainly some names. Som Yasham. Uh, Leela Sundar, we did Madhura Nanda Prabhu, Sri Leka Didi, Dhanava Dhananjaya Prabhu, Satya Bhama, Radha Sundari and Mayapur, Prafula Krishna Prabhu, Jai Govinda, Satya Bhama Didi, 
Hare Krishna. All right. Let's offer our obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Bancha Kalpa, Tribhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vevacha, Patita Nam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo, Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna.